All right, guys, we've got our new generator installed. We fired it up. Everything's working perfectly. So now we want to get to connecting the remote controls from inside the coach so that you can start and stop the generator and you can also see how many hours the generator has been running from inside. Before you start doing this, guys, make sure you disconnect your battery. I know this is low voltage DC wiring that we're working with today, but still to be safe, please disconnect your battery. This particular install is running only on propane, so we don't have to worry about the prime function from inside the coach. We're really just gonna be worrying about starting and stopping and running that counter. So we really have two wires that we need to really track down. I like to start first by going inside, opening up the controls as they exist, and let's see what the wiring looks like and try and trace that back down to match up with the wiring for the generator. Let's get started. Okay, we're inside the coach here, and this is the control panel that we're gonna be working with. It's a very standard control panel. You're gonna see this on a lot of different RVs. Up here at the top are the controls for the generator and the rest of this we're really not going to worry about. This is just so that you can measure your water levels and uh, propane levels and things like that. So we're not going to worry about that. We're really just going to deal with the top section here. And all we have is a start stop button for the generator and then we have the hour meter so you can determine how long the generator has been running and when it needs to be serviced. We're going to start by taking out the four screws here and we're going to pop this control panel off and see what the wiring looks on the back side. You want to be really careful when you take these screws off. They're very small and they're going into some very delicate laminate here um, or sometimes you might have wood but either way be careful taking these screws out. You don't want to strip out the holes or hurt them in any way. So we're going to carefully take out the screws. We're going to pull off the controller here and have a look to see what the wiring looks like on the back side. Okay, we took the four screws off the panel now. Let's carefully pull the panel out away from the wall here to see what the wiring looks like. We want to be very ginger here. These are very thin wires. They're very delicate. We don't want to break them. We don't want to break off any of these connections in here. So I'm just going to let the panel hang just a little bit to show you guys what we have. So on the back side here is our hour meter. And we can see we've got two wires. We have this red wire here and we have this black wire here. Um, the P may mean positive, this N may mean neutral. Over here on the start stop switch, we have a yellow wire coming out from the side that would indicate stop. And on the side that would indicate start, we have this brown wire, and then we also have these two black wires in the middle. So when you see this wire jumping across from this switch to this switch, this is most likely our ground wire. It's usually gonna be black or brown, but that's gonna be our ground wire. So if we follow this all the way back, We've just got it here still. And now we're going through here. So this is our wire, our ground wire coming in. And you can see we have another connector here where we switch the wires over to now being all white and yellow. So this does make our job a little bit more complicated, but we're still gonna work through it. So this wire is our ground wire. And you can see while they're all white, they do have some numerical indications on them. And this one ends with a couple letters. It appears to be LN on the end. This white wire has LM, and this white wire has LL on it. Let's see if you can see that there. The very end of the wire shows LL. So that's how we know which wire is which when we go down to the actual generator. So make sure you don't stop here. Make sure you follow that wire as far as you can to determine what's gonna actually run all the way to the generator. So in this situation, this wire here that we've identified as our ground changes from this thin black wire to this slightly thicker white wire with the marks LN. So we're going to make a note. Our ground wire is the wire LN. When we look at the other wires, we've got a yellow wire coming off of the switch indicating at the stop side. And then we have this wire here coming off the switch indicating at the start side. Now, with the flex power generator, we're actually going to combine these two together down at the generator because we only use one button to start and stop the generator. Very simple. So both of these wires will be connected down at the generator. But what we want to do is we want to see what do they change into at this connector before it goes down to the generator. So again, if we follow our wire, we find this switch wire for the start is going right here to this LW or LM, I guess. So the LM is the start wire. This yellow wire here turns into this white wire, which is the LL, I believe. Time to get a shot and spinning that thing around. 
Let's try this. There we go. Well, it's upside down, but you can see LL is the other wire. So we're going to combine those two together down there and connect that to our start wire for the generator. On the timer side, we have the ground, but this is all connected. So we don't need to connect a separate ground. We'll already have our ground connected. But this red wire is for our timer. So if we follow our red wire all the way through this bundle, it then goes to this connector. Here's our red wire here. And you can see it changes to the yellow wire that will go down to the generator. So the yellow wire, we're gonna make a note, is our timer wire. So we're gonna connect the timer for the generator to this yellow wire down at the generator. So let's go back down. Let's see if we can find each of these wires. We're gonna cut them, and then we're gonna connect them to the wiring harness on the generator. Okay guys, we're down under the coach now, and you can see these are our wires that were coming down this piece of conduit from the controller. I've stripped the conduit back so we can get these wires out and we can see we've got our three white wires and our one yellow that were coming out of the controller. Now these were previously in this harness, but we're not gonna use this. We're just gonna take each of the individual wires and connect them so you can see I've just snipped those wires off. We get rid of this harness and I'm gonna pull this conduit back out of the way. <clears throat> On the other side, this is our connector for the flex power generator. You can tell there's several conductors in here, but we're only gonna be using these three so we've got the pink wire, the blue wire, and the black wire. I've gone ahead and snipped each one of these so that we can get them connected. This will be for our timer, the blue is for the start, and the black is for the ground. So for the start and stop, you can see we have the two wires, the LM and the LL. Those were the start and stop wires that we identified at the controller. We've combined them into one end on the splice, and then over here we have a blue from the flex power generator on the other side. Over here, we have our ground wire. This is the wire that we marked LN as the ground wire. It's going to the black wire here on the flex power. And then finally, we have our yellow wire that we said was the timer, and that's going to the pink wire on the flex power. So everything looks good here, but before we finish this up with the shrink wrap and uh, zip tying this up, we wanna make sure everything's working appropriately. So let's go back in the coach Let's try and fire this up from the controller and make sure that everything's working. Okay guys, we're back inside the coach now. We just wanna check and make sure that all of our connections were connected appropriately and everything's working properly. We're gonna try and start the generator by holding down on the start button. You do wanna hold down on that button for probably four or five seconds until the generator fires and then you can let your finger off. Let's see if our connections work. There, it's starting to fire. Keep holding, fire it up. Take my finger off. You can hear the generator running nicely. Our uh, hour meter has turned on. You can see though, this is still the old hour meter from the previous generator. It's showing 333 running hours. That's obviously not correct. So if you want, you can just make a note of that as you mark your new generator so you can tell when you need to service it. Or you can order a new one of these, pop it in and start at zero hours. And then you can monitor your generator easily from inside. You can always still go outside the coach look on the face of the generator and you can always tell exactly how many hours it's been running as well. So the hour meter's working well, everything started fine. Let's see if the stop button works as well. We're gonna hold our finger down on the stop button as well. And there we go. Generator stops and starts from inside the coach. We're all good to go. Let's go out camping. Okay guys, our generator fired up quickly for us, but if you have any issues where you try and start your generator from the coach and it doesn't start initially, remember everything is digitally controlled on this generator, so it's gonna try a restart sequence itself after about 10 seconds. So just wait, be patient, it will try and restart itself. If you're wondering whether or not the controls are the issue or the generator's the issue, just come down and start it right away, right here from the front of the generator. Okay. Everything's working now. Let's go back under the RV and I wanna show you how we button everything up and finish this job up. We've got all of our shrink wrap pieces already ready. We're gonna slide them over each of the crimps. We're gonna shrink wrap all the way around each of these crimps. Okay guys, this is all buttoned up now. We have taped everything together from here. We have this extra connector that's just sitting from the flex power. There's no reason to snip these wires or anything. We've got the conduit running from the controller. We've tucked as many of the wires into the conduit as we can. 
and then we have zip tied this up into the holding onto the frame so that it can't fall down and hit the exhaust or anything else make sure that this just looks good there's nowhere for this wire to go this is ready okay guys this wraps it up for this video we've showed you how to install a remote panel that's already pre-existing in an rv with your new flex power generator if you have any questions about this video you can post them in the comments or you can send them to us at support at rvmp.co you can call us anytime at 855 happy rv and also check out our website where we have the flex power generator all types of accessories to go with it as well as all kinds of other power solutions for your rv at www.rvmp.co we'll see you out there camping